Did you ever bring up a criticism or something that you were like had an issue with or like, hey, like I found out that you did this or like, hey, I'm struggling with like how this is coming across and all of a sudden the other person got super angry, just like came at you of like, oh, I can't believe that you do this, I can't believe that you, you look at this, I can't believe that you hear about this, that you talk to me, this, whatever it might be, okay? Sometimes we have this aspect where narcissists get super angry when they're confronted. When you actually bring something up to hold them accountable, then they just get to a place where they rage out. Let's dive into that today. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. Each of those are actually stages in the developmental process that we put together with Raw Motivations to guide you into your healing journey, to guide you into a growth mindset. All the way from just the awareness of the videos to the development of the Thriver community, a three-month intensive program. If you guys are new and you're not sure where to be able to start, one of the things I always recommend people is to start off with some of the journals. Being able to start off on realmotivation.com slash books, we've got different journals from fantasy to reality, and then also a new one that's coming out as well, which is talking about from regret to gratitude. So check those out. One of the things is we wanna be able to help educate people and give them awareness of toxicity, of narcissism, of just abuse in general, so that people are able to find their power to move past and to get free. Right now, we've got a couple days left to be able to sign up for the Clarity Challenge. You can go to claritychallenge.net to be able to see all the different perks, all the different things that are actually built in there. But it's 45 days, and I'm throwing in a couple extra days. I'm throwing in five bonus days just to be able to help give more and more content to help you improve, grow, heal, and change. We've got stuff where I'm talking to you, I'm writing stuff on whiteboards, you're reading text, you're doing assignments, all things to be able to guide you through a process to break the trauma bond, to rewire your mindset, to get you free to get you finding out who you are and to continue to move forward. So check that out, claritychallenge.net. So when we're talking about narcissists getting angry when they are confronted. Like you try to bring up this criticism, you try to bring up a concern, you know, maybe you brought up this like hurt of like, I'm struggling with this, like I feel this way and you got yelled at. Like you got degraded, you got put down, you got belittled. Well, we're gonna dive in of like why they get angry, like why they get defensive and also like what to do. So narcissists get angry a lot, right? You might see it ab above the surface of like the rage, all that kind of stuff, or it might be below the surface and you're like, something's wrong. Like, I feel like they're angry. I just can't put my finger on it. And sometimes that anger comes out in so many different ways. You'll have like the regular traditional like rage uh, where you'll be going through yelling, screaming, uh, maybe hitting things around the house, which is physical abuse, just to clarify. I had to clarify that with a client the other day. Like it's a physical thing that's happening. It might not be to you. It might not be they didn't hit you, but they punched beside you. That's still physical abuse. Um, might be the screaming, might be like in your face, might be all different types of things like physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. A lot of times we see just rage kind of like pour out, like the anger, the frustration. Sometimes you have a narcissist that rages outright. Like I'm going to scream, I'm going to yell at your face, I'm going to I'm going to call you awful names, I'm going to do this like to you. And then sometimes you have the aspect where it's the silent treatment where it's very subtle. It's like belittling, it's like passive aggressive, it's like the small things and it's meant to be able to put you down. But at the same time, you'll be left thinking like, are they mad? Are they upset? Like, I don't know. I just feel. Sometimes your body can feel it before you even like your mind understands what's going on. All right. So we're talking about they get angry when confronted. Like, that specific concept. Okay. So why? Why do they actually get angry when they're confronted? Well, one of the biggest things that we're going to dive into really quick here is exposure. A narcissist does not want to get exposed of who they are. I never wanted to get exposed of the shit that was inside or the things that I was doing of how I was lying or cheating or hurting other people. Like I didn't want to be exposed for that. I didn't want to be exposed that the fact that my wife was on the floor crying was because of me. I didn't want that. I didn't want that honesty, that accountability. I didn't want the fact that she was sitting in the other room having a panic attack because of me. There's an aspect of like, I did not want that exposure. I did not want that confrontation. I didn't want that honesty. And a narcissist is typically running away from honesty because they're not willing to confront who they are or what they've done. So this exposure piece is very, very scary for a narcissist because it exposes the guilt, the shame, and exposes all the different things underneath. That fear is like, I cannot handle it. I have to do whatever I can to avoid it, to deflect it, to ignore it, to compartmentalize it, whatever it might be. So let's look at it in four different directions. 
uh, the exposure produces this fear. And it brings about this like control and manipulation. Like I have to be able to control you because I'm afraid of how I'm going to be exposed. I'm afraid of how my image is going to look. I'm afraid of what you're going to tell other people. I'm afraid that you're going to take my money. I'm afraid, you know, and all this stuff here is like, I'm afraid to get exposed to the world. So then it brings about more control, more manipulation, more isolation to try to make sure like, no, you will not talk about this. You don't go talk to our friends and family about our relationship. You don't interact with other people telling them how I did this. That's something we do together. We work on this together, like all this stuff. There's this fear component that's like, I don't want to be exposed, so I got to control it. I got to manipulate it more. And then there's exposure piece that threatens them. Like it actually is like a threatened piece of like, whoa, like you're threatening me. You're like, I was just expressing my feelings. Like, no, you're threatening me. And that's because that exposure, it exposes their control. It also challenges the perception of themselves. You see, when a narcissist thinks I'm the best person ever, and you're like, actually, like, I, I really hate you because of everything you've done to me. They're like, uh, no, like there's this exposure, like, oh crap, like you're threatening my reality that I believe. And then I may be telling other people you're threatening the mask that I've constructed to make myself look like a great person. And so that exposure threatens that exposure also brings about this vulnerability piece. Like it feels very, very vulnerable to be exposed, to be able to communicate the things that I communicate. Even if you go back and you watch some of my like original videos to even what now, there's a depth, there's a different level sometimes that I'll go into in communicating about my past, in communicating about who I am, because I'm learning and getting more comfortable with being vulnerable, even if it means I'm going to get shredded by other people or that other people are going to yell at me or whatever it might be. Because vulnerability for a narcissist oftentimes feels like death. Like it feels like this attack. It feels like this constant like like beating down of like if I'm vulnerable, I will be exposed and I will be destroyed. Or if I'm vulnerable, they'll see who I actually am and then they'll leave. So I can't show who I actually am. Instead, it switches around to like let me attack instead of actually be vulnerable. Let me push you down instead of actually deal with the feelings. Let me project on you then work on my own stuff. And the other thing with the exposure is it produces and it shows, it exposes this aspect of shame. You see, when you confront a narcissist, there's this twinge of guilt. I say a twinge because it's very fast. Most people don't believe it's there, but it's very fast. As soon as that guilt comes out, it says, hey, I did something bad. It switches to shame. Hey, I am bad. And then instantly we have to blame the other person. It can't be me. Deflect. It can't be me. Project. Can't be me, put it on someone else to be able to get away from the aspect that it might actually be my fault. And then rage. And then that cycle goes over and over and over and over again. Some of the defense mechanisms of when a narcissist is getting angry when you're confronting them is they just want to hide from the truth. Like they don't want that exposure. So as a result, keep an eye out for denial. I didn't do that. And you're like, I just saw you do that. I didn't do that. Keep an eye out for projection, putting it back on you, making you feel like you have this feeling or this idea or this thought that's not your own. I mean, gaslighting, changing around the story and then convincing you that your perception of that story is not real. And putting up a giant image, hiding the flaws. There's this big aspect that you're going to see with narcissists of, of avoidance of shame because it feels deadly, right? It feels awful. So a narcissist is going to be avoid it at all costs to try to get away from it. To blame, put things on you. You start to realize, like, wait a second, I'm getting blamed for stuff that they did, getting blamed for stuff that I didn't cause. So, like, taking a look of like what is actually real. Oftentimes, the rage. Or they're hiding from the truth. They're hiding from the problem. So, I'm wrapping up here with some of it. What do we actually do? You first need to understand like the mass, the concept, what's there, the game that's being played, and then you need to start knowing like what's actually underneath the mask. What are you actually seeing? Dealing with that rage and you see that rage, it means something oftentimes is deeper than going on. They just don't have a anger management problem. There's something else deeper there that's triggering that. Rage is one of the easiest emotions for a narcissist to tap into. It's one of the few that they can identify. I'm happy and I'm angry. That's it. And so a lot of times you start to realize like, wait a second, there's rage about a lot of different things. There's something else going on there, whether it's a personality disorder, whether it's an anger management issue, where it's something else, like there's typically another level. 
There's typically something deeper that's promoting that, like shame, like guilt, whatever is underneath that they're struggling with down in the pit, down deep inside them. They're just like, ah, and they rage back out, okay? Dealing with it, knowing that something different, something deeper is going on typically. The willingness to be able to confront the inner self, will they actually change? Like that's the hard part of like, if they're not willing to change, if they're not willing to confront the stuff that's inside or the stuff that's deeper, you're not gonna be able to confront that either. You're not gonna be able to pull that out. So just labeling and saying one thing and attacking, whatever it might be, whatever it looks like, okay, is not going to fix the other person. It has to come from them. They have to be willing to confront their inner self. Otherwise, nothing's gonna change. So you need to kind of take a step back and start to protect yourself. Start to establish healthy boundaries. Start to remove yourself from the situation. Being calm, whether you're in the situation, being assertive, but still calm, like not reacting, all those things have to be a part of it and understanding like, hey, when I bring this up and they respond this way, like there's not a willingness, there's not a receptiveness on the other side for them to grow, heal, change, and develop. Last but not least, like knowing how to stand up for you can be extremely difficult. In getting to that place of finding you, of understanding you, of understanding boundaries, how boundaries are directional, how boundaries like help keep you aligned. They're the guardrails of your life's purpose. And when you start to identify those and go through a system and a plan to find those, those can be very huge in your development and in your freedom. I want to be able to invite you to check out the Clarity Challenge claritychallenge.net to be able to sign up with that because that's what we do every single day with people helping guide them through a system to find themselves again to build healthy boundaries to not go back to toxicity to break the trauma bond and to be free check that out today go to claritychallenge.net 